When we look at the aerial photographs of this area, what really jumps out, what is one, what is one of the most obvious features are these networks, kind of like crazy paving that covers the bed surfaces pretty much everywhere. Now this is much more obvious in the limestone units and it's the limestone units that are really displaying really well this network of planar features. So each one of these lines around the crazy paving that is breaking up this bed is actually a plane of weakness. So each one of these lines, just as we've seen before in three dimensions, is a plane. So the whole of this bed is chopped up into little basically bricks by all of these sets of what we call joints. Joints are extensional fractures. So these are planes where we've got the rocks moving apart. And typically joints form as rocks are brought up to the surface. So as they're exhumed, the rocks relax, they expand and they form these joints. And we can see here that there are several different sets. There's ones that are kind of going off into the distance, slightly curving. We've got another set that's fairly regular, kind of going diagonally across. We've got sets here that are kind of being broken up, but more heading off in this direction. So there are reasons for the orientations of joints, but often it can be very different depending on the thickness of bed, depending on if it's very um, uniform or whether it's got ir irregularities. So for instance, here we've got some nodular limestone beds which have completely different joints than a more uniform set. And working out the relative timing of when the joints formed, it can be quite tricky. One important thing here at Kilve and at East Quantock's Head is that the joints are typically not mineralised. So there's none of the calcite that we see dominant in the faults. None of that. It's just, these are just purely planar jointed surfaces, no mineralisation, which suggests that they formed at a different time to when all the faults formed in the area.